In this video, I'm going to show you how to put uh, PowerShell onto a Ubuntu distro in the Windows subsystem for Linux version 2. And then we're going to hook up VS Code to that WSL instance and start running PowerShell scripts from inside VS Code. So the first thing that I did was I had to upgrade to uh, Windows 2004 uh, Insider uh, Slow Ring Edition. So that'll give you the WSL2 stuff and then you'll have to install the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, the Linux kernel, and then you're going to have to select a distro from the Windows Store. So I selected Ubuntu, and if we actually go to my uh, start menu here, you'll see I have a Ubuntu a Linux uh, version running here um, in WSL. So uh, those steps are pretty well documented, and it's actually pretty easy to get up and running once you've updated Windows and that kind of thing. Uh, the other thing that I've installed is a remote WSL extension for VS Code, so that is installed here on my VS Code um, instance that you can see here. All right, so I'm going to show you how, like, kind of the uh, layman's way to copy and install PowerShell on WSL2. Um, Ubuntu Snap does not work for installing PowerShell. Snap doesn't actually work at all inside WSL2 right now. So um, to get the files in there, you could use wget and download them from uh, the PowerShell GitHub repo. But what I'm actually going to do is uh, show you the Explorer. Uh, integration. So from my Ubuntu bash prompt, what I'm actually going to do is type explorer.exe. What that's going to do is open this particular uh, Explorer instance, and that's going to give me access to my WSL um, share. Oops. So now if I type in WSL and then the dollar sign, you'll see that I have a couple different shares uh, for the Windows subsystem for Linux. And here's my Ubuntu in instance. If I double click that, now I am navigated inside my uh, Ubuntu instance and I have access to all the different files that you would have inside uh, Linux. So I'm going to actually just install the PowerShell um, assemblies and binaries uh, just into my home directory. So I'll create a new PS folder and um, I've already downloaded the tarball and extracted it. And you can see here that I have PowerShell 7.0.1. Uh, Linux x64, that's the, also the name of the um, tarball that I downloaded. So I can literally just copy all these files, go over to this PS directory, and paste them, and now it's actually copying all the files into my uh, Linux distro. So uh, it's easy as, as that to uh, pretty much get the PowerShell binaries in there. Like I said, uh, you could also use wget and extract the files directly inside the Linux uh, subsystem bash prompt, but I kind of wanted to show the Explorer integration because it's neat. All right, so now let's go back into my bash prompt, and you can see that I'm currently in my uh, home dir, and there is the PS folder I just created. So now if we go over to the PS dir, uh, we're going to have a PSW, PWSH file. Uh, we're going to have to make sure that file is set to uh, allow us to execute it, and then from there we should be able to start PowerShell. We should be able to start PowerShell. Um, so now I'm running PowerShell inside the WSL uh, instance of this distro. Uh, so uh, from there you can you know issue PowerShell commands that you would expect, like get process and see the processes that are currently running in this Linux uh, instance. So uh, the next thing that I want to do is kind of show you uh, VS Code integration. So what's really cool about WSL is you can do something like this. You can just type code and then dot to say open the current folder. And now I have a, uh, a VS Code instance. And what you're going to notice about this VS Code instance is, first of all, the title up here. I am currently running inside my WSL um, uh, container, or not container, but like WSL, uh, pretty much Ubuntu instance. And on the left hand side here, I have all the files from this directory, this PS uh, directory inside WSL. And then I have some controls. This comes with that extension that I installed. Um, and you can see I can do some things with WSL, like dropping out of this connection or reopening other folders, that kind of thing. So now I have access to all the PowerShell stuff. So let's actually um, look at installing the PowerShell extension. So I'm actually going to pop over to this VS Code um, instance. So this VS Code instance was open from Windows and not from uh, my WSL command line. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually show you how to you know, access WSL directly using the remote WSL extension. So you can see I have this remote explorer now. 
When I click that, I have a little uh, pretty much browser of the different WSL targets as well as folders within um, that folder so or within that target. So these are like uh, recent folders that I've accessed. So now I should be able to select um, a folder, for example, like if I want to open this folder, and it's going to open W or a um, another code instance against WSL Ubuntu. So you can see here that I don't have the PowerShell extension installed. I'm not getting IntelliSense or anything. I don't have uh, syntax highlighting. But if you go to the extension uh, app or uh, App pane, I guess. Uh, what you can do is you can actually see that I have some locally installed extensions. So there, those are extensions on my Windows machine. You can see I have no extensions installed inside my WSL Ubuntu machine. But if you scroll down, what you can do is you can actually look at the extensions that you do have installed. And then if you just click this install in WSL uh, Ubuntu, it's actually going to go ahead and install that extension inside our WSL instance. So now I'm going to reload this particular page. And what you're going to notice now is it started up and uh, I now have PowerShell installed. I got this error message on the right hand side that the PowerShell extension was unable to find PowerShell. Uh, th this is a problem because I just copied the files over. It doesn't know where I put PowerShell, so it can't locate it. Um, so the extension is not going to work. Uh, you can set the path for inside your Linux container so it can find PWH, that kind of thing. But I'll show you how to set this uh, PowerShell uh, additional XCPath settings via the settings.json here. So th this particular file is your user set settings.json for your WSL instance. And uh, this is the path. And the way to find that is if you hit control comma, it'll open your settings page. And then now you have a new tab at the top. So you have users, workspace, and in the middle here we have WSL settings. So if I click that, and then in the top right, you can click this open settings JSON, and that will open that file. So then you can edit that directly. You can also edit them in that settings dialog if you can get to the settings that you need. So I'm just going to copy and paste these settings that I saved and plop them into my JSON file. So this is going to pretty much tell um, the PowerShell extension where to find PowerShell or PWSH. So if I just easiest thing for me to do there is just close that and then open a new instance of code inside WSL and let's actually open a different folder. I'm going to open this folder because it had a PS1 file that I can run in it. All right, so now if we go to the PS1 file, it's going to activate the PowerShell extension. And since I set that setting this time, it should actually find uh, PWSH. You can see I didn't get that error and now I have a PowerShell integrated terminal at the bottom which means I have things like uh, PowerShell readline. You can see that I'm getting syntax highlighting. I can execute PowerShell in here and that kind of thing. So in this video I just kind of went over how to get up and running debugging PowerShell or running PowerShell inside VS Code for WSL and if you like this video subscribe for more.